Welcome to the Superfast Touch Designer tutorial series. In the following tutorial, we're going to learn the fastest method I've found to create vector fields. Remember that to modulate the movement, I'm using a noise and a few patterns, but you can just as easily use a live webcam, videos, or images, which makes this effect extremely interesting to use in different types of projects. With that said, let's do a quick review of what we'll cover. Chapter 1, Overview. Let's take a look at how this network is structured. The main section, which I've named Main Network Vector Fields, is built from a grid used to generate the instances, a noise used as vector data to modify what we could call the fields, and two patterns that create additional motion inside the vectors of the instances. In the second section, we have a very simple render setup that I'm not going to cover here, because many of my tutorials already explain this part. But basically, I'm using an environment light with an HDRI image the Geo component references a PBR material where we will use a ramp to create a color map. And finally, we use a screen space ambient occlusion to give the shadows more depth and a level for the final color correction. All right, with that overview done, let's jump into the actual tutorial. A quick pause. If we haven't met yet, I'm Okamirufu, and my life's purpose is to create, inspire, and educate through my work as a creative technologist focused on touch designer. I'm jumping in just for a moment to let you know that I've built a growing community on school, where you'll find beginner and intermediate courses, exclusive tutorials, and a library of downloadable project files, including special bundles you won't find anywhere else. But more than that, it's an active, thriving space. For example, in one of the exclusive tutorials I uploaded recently, there are already tons of people interacting, sharing project files, asking questions, and helping each other. It goes far beyond a traditional academic setting, I've put a lot of energy into making it practical, efficient, and fun. And the best part? This space is slowly integrating all the value I've already built on Patreon, all in one place for the same price. I truly hope to see you there, sharing knowledge, experimenting together, and asking the questions that help us all grow. I'll leave all the links in the description. Chapter two, network. You're going to start by creating a grid pop. Change the Y axis to a value of two because we're working in a vertical format and you'll need a taller grid. For the columns and rows, a value of 150 for each is perfect to begin with. Later you can experiment with higher or lower values depending on the results you want. Now, connect the noise and use the following values. Use any seed you want. Keep the period at two, a value I use frequently, and set the harmonics to 2, 2, and 1 consecutively. Finish with an amplitude of 0 0.5 and keep the exponent at 1. Now go to the transform and as always, let's give it some movement using abstime.seconds. The important part here is to rename the noise output to rotation. This allows us to create an attribute called rotation that carries the characteristics of the noise we just built. Perfect. Now let's continue by connecting a pattern. Leave the parameter size at one and select the random pattern type. Change map to high to 0 0.15. In combine operations, select add and target the attribute called rotation that we created with the noise. Leave the output name as rotation. If you want to understand this in much more detail, how it works and why, I recommend visiting my school community, where I have complete beginner and advanced touch designer courses with an active community and deeper explanations of these concepts. Now, connect another pattern. Again, keep the size at one and select easy and easy out as the pattern type. Increase the number of cycles to 10 and raise map to high to 2. Keep the combine operation on set and call the output attribute scale. Perfect. I know that for the moment we're doing things somewhat blindly, but once we create the instances, try moving these parameters and you'll naturally start understanding how this network behaves. Now create a math and connect a null at the end that we can call instances. Inside the math, the attribute we want to modify is rotation, which is currently too low. 
we need to multiply it by radial values. For example, 180, which is what I'm setting inside the multiply field of the math. Once you have that ready, create a box below. Increase the size of the Z axis to 10 and reduce the uniform scale to 0.01. Make sure to connect the box in the geo component and now simply reference the null named instances inside the geo. Now make sure to select all the parameters we've created previously in each instance option. For the X and Y axis, select point zero and point one, which correspond to those coordinates. For rotation, use the attributes we created, rotation zero, rotation one, and rotation two in order. And for scale, since it's a single value, use scale across X, Y, and Z. And that's it. Now, for example, if we turn off the first pattern where we added randomness to the rotation, you'll see the vector field effect change dramatically. The same thing happens if you disable the pattern that creates the scale attributes. Now that you understand this, try different combinations and especially play with the network parameters. Focus on the noise and the two patterns. I hope you've successfully completed this tutorial. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and smash the like button. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments.